You know, it's hard to believe, but 1967 looks like the year that the Fifth Dimension started. Florence LaRue is on the line. and uh, Well, good morning, Florence. How are you? I'm fine, Ken. Looking forward to coming to sunny Chicago. I understand that uh, the weather has not been all that great in L.A. lately. Right. It's a little chilly, and of course our skies aren't quite as blue as yours. <laughs> but by tonight, you will be in uh, Chicago entertaining through the rest of the week, I believe through May 15th. That's right. We'll be at the Blue Max. You, you must lead a relatively hectic life, I would think. Very. <laughs> Between all the travel and my duties as a mother, and it keeps me quite busy. You know, as competitive as the music business is, uh, the chances for success are pretty slim, I would think. Did you have any idea that the fifth dimension would be around in 1982 when, when you got started? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I thought we would just be having some hit records by now, <laughs> or a little before now, but because, as you know, the group, had a hit record within a year. We had Up, Up, and Away, and we were getting gold records and Grammys, and it all happened so fast that it was really quite surprising. In fact, you made a climb uh, much quicker than most groups then. We sure did. I, so I, I knew the group would be successful, or I wouldn't put my time and energies into it, but it happened much faster than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. So many uh, groups, I think, though, had that flash-in-the-pan success, and then you never hear from them again. That's right. Well, you know, I think it's partly because a lot of groups depend upon gimmicks. Um, it can be, oh, electronics or makeup or, you know, whatever. And because I think the basis of the fifth dimension is just good, solid harmony, uh, music that people of all ages can enjoy, I believe that that's the reason for our longevity. When you talk about longevity, too, and for entertainment for all ages, you have been doing a thing recently called Ain't Misbehavin'. Right. And, boy, you're talking about going back a few years th to the music of Fats Waller. Oh, yes, back to the 30s and 40s, and it's great music. We toured with the play. Um, the Fifth Dimension took all the parts. There are five parts in the play, and we toured in six major cities, and it was really great fun. Mm -hmm. Who plays uh, Fats Waller? Well, now, naturally, who else? <laughs> <laughs> I take it it isn't you, Florence. No, it's not I. Ron Towns, and, of course, the heavy set one plays a part of Fats Waller. I had a, a hunch. Lamont wouldn't be doing, wouldn't be doing Fats Waller. No. And, uh, but I'll tell you, Ken, I did the songs that Nell Carter did so well on Broadway, and that was quite a change, because you know, you know Nell really put her, her stamp on those songs and did them so well that I was a little frightened at first and wondering, now, what can I do? But I went into it with the attitude, well, I can't sing like Nell, and I can't be Nell, because we're quite different, not only in size, but in sound. So I just went in and did them my way. Mm -hmm. Some great songs, though. I Can't Give You Anything But Love, and of course... Ain't misbehaving. Yeah. Sure. We do some of the songs in the show. You do it, yeah, sort of a uh, stylized version of Ain't Misbehaving in, uh, in miniature, maybe, huh? Right. I, I suppose you're still doing all the favorites, though, that we... Oh, yes, we have to do. We do some of our hits. We do some songs that have been recently high on the record charts and a few standards. So it's still a well-rounded show that you know, most people will enjoy. Mm -hmm. Let me break for one of your songs, in fact, a commercial or two as well. We'll play a little music of the fifth dimension and come back to talk with Florence LaRue. I'll leave a little gap on the tape here. What? Florence LaRue is our telephone guest this morning, and it's a it's a pleasure to talk with somebody that's been in the in the music business as long as you have and have created the uh, well the sound that's really become unique, the fifth dimension sound. Did you strive for anything in particular or did it did it just happen, Florence? To be honest, Ken, it just happened. We got together, five people with five totally different voices five totally different backgrounds in music. We had backgrounds in gospel, jazz, um, pop, you name it. And our sound was really developed, if you want to call it that, by working with people like Renee DeKnight, who did our arranging for our shows, uh, Bob Alcifar, who did the vocal arrangements for our records, our big hit records, and of course Jimmy Webb, who also worked with us in arranging for our hit records. So the sound really evolved and it wasn't really planned. Mm -hmm. I've heard some people, in fact, I was interviewing Harry Mills of the Mills Brothers, and he said that brothers or sisters groups, uh, he feels, have a certain advantage because there's a similarity in the vocal style. Most definitely, not only in the style, but in sound. You get a blend with families that you just cannot get with uh, two people that just come, two or three or more people that just come together to sing. But yet, uh, I think the blend that you folks have is just uh, is super. Oh, thank you. Well, we work very hard at it. We rehearse and... Uh, consciously listen to blend together mm -hmm. so maybe maybe without actually sitting down and planning that it, it worked out that way right but of course now we work on our blend and 
we plan our harmonies. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, have those nights, and this is maybe kind of silly, but I know a lot of folks are interested. You have those nights when maybe a couple of the members are really up in the group and they really feel like going to it, and you sort of have to do the old uh, pep talk for the other two? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's not always that you have everyone who's up. But that's part of the advantage of working with the group is when someone's a little down, at least you have the support of the other four. Mm-hmm. The other, th- yeah, the other three, I guess, when I was going to say, if two were up, that would be, that would leave three left. Right. Math has never been my, uh, <laughs> my strong point. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, the Blue Max is the scene for, uh, for you. I don't know if you've performed there before or not. Yeah, it's a nice room. We enjoy it. It's a, it's a nice intimate room, isn't it? Yes. And uh, folks will have a chance to uh, take you in uh, through Saturday night. I believe there's a couple of different shows on right. some of the evenings. And so uh, so make your reservations and uh, get on in. Florence LaRue, thank you very, very much. I don't know what the, what the new things are for the, for the Fifth Dimension. Any of you have uh, aspirations to do anything else? Or do you think the group will? Definitely. Well, you know, I am an actress, and I just totally put aside my acting career when I became a member of the group. Now, however, I plan on activating that part of my career uh, without leaving the group, but taking time to do individual projects, and I'm looking forward to that very much. Even in recording now, I, c- I could see where uh, your actressing ability, or your acting ability, actressing ability? I'm making up words as I go. <laughs> your acting ability could play a part because we are looking toward uh, video recordings, aren't we? Oh, yes. Oh, that's going to be quite popular. Yeah. And uh, also the Fifth Dimension is doing our first special in many years. And uh, we were doing a lot of different things, not just uh, recording. Mm-hmm. One other thing I should mention, and this is only fair, I think, and that is that your interest turn to other things besides entertainment sometimes, and you've done quite a bit of work with uh, children's groups. And That's right, and th- Children's Village here in Los Angeles, and uh, with, with groups all over the country. I've gone to schools and spoken to groups and to organizations and clubs, particularly on child abuse. And uh, That's a big problem nowadays, too, isn't it? Yes, it is. And... But fortunately, we are recognizing the problem and doing something about it. And not just taking children away from their families, but helping the families to overcome the problem and reunite them in a more positive way. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, if I can sneak one other plug in here, you have written a book or been working on a book, haven't you? I'm working on a book on health and beauty. And, uh, well, I guess you and Jane Fonda maybe have uh, jumped on the same bandwagon here. Well, perhaps, you know, Jane and I used to take classes together, and then she <laughs> left the class that I was studying in and opened her own studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's got sort of an exercise book out. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard about it. Right, it's an exercise book, uh-huh. Yeah, but anyway, yours will be out, uh, what, later this year? Hopefully by the end of the year. Okay, so we'll watch for that. Any new albums? Yes, we're finally back in the recording studio, and we're very excited. We're recording with Tony Camillo, who you may know produced uh, Gladys Knight and... Um, and the Pips? Midnight Train to Georgia and mm-hmm. those types of things. And we're very excited about retor- recording with Tony, and the record will be out hopefully in a couple of months. All righty. Well, I've talked all around the bandwagon here, but uh, <laughs> Florence LaRue, I've enjoyed it, and uh, all the best. Thank you, Ken. Look forward to seeing you at the Boom Terrific.